The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello, I'm Carl Seidel, host of The People's View, sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee. And if you want, we meet at the Crown Plaza the second Thursday of every month. And if you want to find out more information, you can go to our website at nashuagop.org. Hello, and today we welcome my guest here, Ken Gage, who's represented from Ward 6 in Nashua. Ken, of course, is a Democrat. Everybody in Ward 6 the, is the, a Democrat, the right? The good Democrats, <laughs> the, the good part of Ward 6. And of course, you are a, a Republican. From Ward 1. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm the good Democrat. There you yeah, go. I guess you're the good. You're the friendly one anyway. Really? Yeah. Did, did, well, <laughs> there are few people who don't believe that. <laughs> you know, that's interesting that you would say that, though. You, are you, do you have any, let me ask the first question, if you don't mind. Do you have any Democrats you don't like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind telling me who they are? <laughs> the list is too long. You know? <laughs> I, I have some Democrats I don't like either. <laughs> I have some Republicans <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's right. a good way. That's to a way to start the show. Yeah, we start that show. <laughs> and all those folks. We hate both uh, Republicans uh, and Democrats. We... Um, Anyway, you've been around too long. <laughs> How many terms are, uh, is this for you? This is my fourth. Only your fourth? I yes. thought it was longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, thank you very much. And I've been married for 30 years. My wife thinks it's like 50, 100 years. There you go. Well, anyway, but uh, what committee are you going to be on this time? Commerce, again. Commerce, again. Which I can argue with those, those, those pesty Republicans who... who Hurt our insurance because commerce is insurance and banking and banking. Oh, you, you nasty people! Hey. Uh, all the trouble you cause there. Oh, so. I don't know about that, but uh, you were uh, you didn't want to have insurance open wide so we can get insurance across state lines. Well, uh, I, if you would have read the law yeah. with Bill O'Brien, I was on that with him. Uh -huh. I was one of the people signed up, and I it see. did come into our committee, uh -huh. and it was immediately shot down completely, uh -huh. even by the Republicans. <laughs> so it's true. Yeah, no, but what uh, what was the problem with how doing a cross line? Well, uh, what we have Obamacare, which the Republicans don't like. And in Obamacare, you have to cover so many things. And you must cover some of the things that older people wouldn't use. Right. Uh, but if every, everybody pays a little, everybody can have insurance. So it's, you want everybody into a one, uh, one type operation, one stop uh, health care. Well, wouldn't that be the way? No. We have auto insurance that allows you to go across state lines. You have auto insurance for people who have uh, a bad uh, reputation for driving cars. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. I, no, I agree with you. But, uh, but what the bill wanted to do was any insurance company could come to New Hampshire mm -hmm. and the people could buy just what they wanted to. Yeah. And the problem was, is that's federally wrong, the way the insurance Well, the way it are, is now. But yeah. if we didn't have uh, the Obamacare restriction, if we had or if we had Obamacare for people who wanted Obamacare and uh, uh, cross state lines for people who wanted cross state lines. Let me tell you something. There was the, a lot of the Republican Southern people who were absolutely against Obamacare. We're, we're talking about the, the Southerners who yelled and screamed and jumped up and down and were nuts about Obamacare. 
Well, what happened, they, they come from poor states. Like Na New Hampshire is a donor state. We donate to other states. <coughs> Uh, we don't get federally money as much federal money back as other states do. If you put a dollar in, you get so much money back from the federal government. Some states get two or three dollars for every dollar they put in back because they're poor. So when you have a poor uh, state and people who are not making that much money and they certainly don't have insurance, when Obamacare came along, 80 percent of them had insurance. Now, all of a sudden, these Republicans uh, who are yelling and screaming, let's get rid of Obamacare, let's get rid of Obamacare, all of a sudden that stopped because their constituency was using it because they had no insurance. Well, wait a minute. I'm, what I'm saying, though, you, if you did use I the I same model. Away with that? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, auto insurance, people, all people are covered. You have to have insurance, right? Correct. Okay. So they're covered. So they can do it. whether it's a poor state or a, a rich state, they get coverage. Correct. Okay. So why can't we use that model for our health care? And everybody who wants car insurance, whether they get a million dollars of car insurance or the minimum car insurance, or whether they get collision, or whether they get towing, or whether they get a rental car, they, they choose what they want. And that's the way it really operates, and it operates very competitively. Listen, I don't have a transmission. I have feet. I don't have tires. <laughs> Some people say I do have a trunk, that has no you know, in the back. The analogy and, and, you know, doesn't and, work. But I do have pistons, okay? Uh, no, that's nice for cars, but for people. The, well, what's the, wrong with well, it? Well, the great problem is, is, is that it goes by mass. How much, and everybody works together on this, especially for health insurance, for instance, there are insurance companies that will not insure you because you got a, but, a bad driving record. How about if you're sick? No, insurance no, no, companies there, there, wouldn't. There's always the fund, the the high high level fund or whatever you want to call it, for the people that have bad records. So everybody is a, enabled to get insurance. They have to pay a higher premium, or if you want, you can subsidize it. That's the that's so your method. So if a parent has a sick child, yes. They can still get insurance, yes. but the insurance would be so high no, I that just, they would have to sell their house. Uh, no, no, that wouldn't work that way. You would you have to, to subsidize. You subsidize it, but you subsidize it directly. I mean, um, so, who subsidizes it? Well, it would be the state. Oh, the state. The state. I'd rather have the state do it. Oh, than the, I see. So the state, you're the guy, but you're the guy, and you're the guys who don't want Medicaid. Is that correct? I don't want, uh, you know what? Then how are you going to subsidize it? You know, no, wait a minute. You have Medicaid now. That's already in, in, been a, uh, in existence for a long time. It's going to be hard to get rid of. I'd rather have not started that and have some kind of a state-run organization that handles something like that. Maybe we could get rid of the bloated the bureaucracy down there in Washington, D.C., and we, would get, we wouldn't have to send so much money down there. We could keep it ourselves and spend it better here. You know, why is it the Republicans always say that? They always say, gee whiz, the government down there is so bad and they're so fat and, they, and, and, and the people, like, gee, they can spend the money better than the government can spend the money. But you know something? The government isn't really, well, let's use, we'll, we'll say the New Hampshire, is really not that big. We'll use New Hampshire as an example. We're not that big. We're the, one of the cheapest states there are. And I hope we can keep it that well, way. Well, we, we are. <laughs> but you turn around and you, people keep saying, let's get rid of these jobs. Let's get rid You know, why don't we raise employment instead of trying to fire people? I want to have more companies here. Why aren't companies coming here? Because our rates are too high. Oh, how uh, about our culture is not that big compared to, let's say, a Boston culture. Well, we're close enough to Boston. Oh, there we go. So we leave New Hampshire to go to have our entertainment? No, you have entertainment here. If you want some special entertainment, well, like old, any big we're city. We're guys. We can do <laughs> my, my, my son. Maybe we want to keep you off the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep our insurance down. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the fact is we are the old people.
I go along with that. And uh, we are the ones who are going to use. I haven't taken my car away from me yet. <laughs> you know, there are people I'll say, you know, if we get rid of those two sitting up there, <laughs> she, with all the money we would well, save. Well, somebody's going to wonder, but yeah, save all the money for the 400 of us that are in the House of Representatives. <laughs> oh, that is, you know, we're doing it again, and uh, you, you're, you're back. You took couple of years off, and I knew you were going to come back, and I knew you were going to win. That that I, I was positive of, because you were angry. You said, they're not going to beat me this time, and you won by a lot. Well, yes, but uh, you guys won by a lot, too. A lot who came in to register the last day. <laughs> well, thank you. That's right. And you got to know how to do it, I'll tell you. <laughs> in fact, next time, you got to watch the Republicans say they're going to do it. 150 came in in, oh, in oh, Ward 1 oh, the really? last day. Really? Yeah, of uh, the 2012 uh, election. Well. 7,500 7, in Nashua alone. I know. Wasn't that good? <laughs> I mean. How, how come they didn't show up this last time? Do, no do, longer there. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> because. <laughs> Uh, really, am I? I have a lot to say. I just don't want to say it. I like you. <laughs> your show has been, the, you know, like a PG. Oh. You know, we certainly can. And your you show know, is that? It's an X show? <laughs> no, I, I do a show for people who don't know called uh, The Art of Politics, which uh -huh. gets very nasty. Oh, I see. But, okay. uh, with Mr. Wow. Elbel, the sour representative, and, and, and uh, old Bill O'Brien. Yeah. Which uh, he will not return my phone calls. Oh, he won't. No, and and the the fact is, is that I thought I was a good guy. Ah, huh? well, you might be. He's kind of busy. He's going away for a weekend. Yeah. Well, I that that was kind of. Uh, I'm so, I, I'm sure you talked about what happened on your show. Yeah. But with not with a Democrat, with a Republican. That's right. And you guys thought that it was awful what happened. Well, we thought that we had take they had taken away. The ability for the the uh, majority party, the Republicans, uh, allowing just Republicans to elect the speaker, where we uh, we had uh, nominated Bill O'Brien, but then uh, Sean Jasper came in, and with the help of probably maybe twenty percent of the Republicans, he uh, the, the and goal of the most Democrats, of the Democrats, most if not all, not all, them, not all. Not all the Democrats. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, we didn't think that was the right way to go. And we were trying to, we felt that, all right, you got the Speaker because you had the House. That's the House rules. The whole House votes right. on the Speaker. Right. But we felt we wanted a majority leader for the Republican Party and that the Speaker should not appoint a, a majority leader and when he had only the minority part of the uh of the of the Republican Party supporting him, so so we try to get that rule, uh, get a rule in that allowed the Republican Party to elect the majority speaker, and and I understand that it didn't go through. It didn't go through. No. So, but there was no Democrats voting for that. The Democrats was were it? voting on the rules committee. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I tried to, tried to blame it all on the Republicans. I was, I was hoping you know, it was no. going to be all the Republicans. Well, no. And uh, but we have but we have an organization of Republicans, and we'll be uh, uh, running our uh, agenda through uh, that group. Well, you know, it, as long as things go and move, I think people are really fed up. For to ha what happened uh, several weeks ago was quite amazing for politics in the state of New Hampshire. Oh. It was it was historic. Well, it happened once before, right? And hopefully, we do have a better record after the fact than the last than well, that time. Well, but you know what ha what happened? Come on, here here's the Republicans and here are the rules. Here's the Democrats, here are the rules. They get together and they agree on the rules. We got the rules. I'm reading the rules. So we go from our caucus, caucus we walk into to, to a, you know, rep hall, and in front of me, uh, you know, there's new rules. And one of the rules that it was changed was that after the first vote, in other words, it was going to be Steve and it was going to be Bill and 
you know, what RuPaul well, this, the this was the proposed rules. The rules hadn't changed. Oh, oh, we well, all voted well, on well, that. Well, hold, hold on, hold on. That's what you wanted to change it to. And yeah. then you wanted, instead of a, a private ballot, you wanted everyone to vote publicly. And why was the reason? That and the reason, the reason the why reason. they didn't, people didn't want to, or the reason why they did? No, the people, the people that proposed <clears throat> those rule changes, why, what did they use as the reason for doing it? They that? say transparency. Right. But it's quite amazing that when they finally voted on, should we use a private vote or should we vote In the private, publicly? Yeah. 200 and what, 88 voted, no, if you want to have a private vote, you can vote. So, well, that's what happened. So that's well, we two-thirds that, of though. the, two-thirds of, of, yeah, of the other. Yeah, but we expected. It was 199? See, well, yeah, I tried. <laughs> See, he haunts me like that. He, he runs him. over and throws <laughs> that out there. And, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> the the rules were not accepted, and you voted. You got your uh, the part for the speaker, but the the part the speaker has most of his sixty percent or more must have been more than sixty percent must have been eighty percent of the vote he got were the Democrats. Now, what are the Democrats going to want for supporting the speaker? Nothing. Nothing. I don't think. I don't think they. Okay, well, that, if that's, but if that's they, the way it goes, that's fine. But then they didn't fine. want Bill O'Brien there. Oh, well, they had demonized him enough, I guess. I didn't, but no. that's true. That's true. And uh, as you know, I, I, I uh, You've had, had Bill on debates your show. 31 mm -hmm. times with Bill O'Brien. Yeah. Those were fun, let me yeah. tell you. Uh, it couldn't get away much with him. I mean, I, very little. Oh, very, he's, a good, he's a good debater. Oh, very, he very knows smart his man. Facts and, well, uh, he knows his facts, but if, if, if you know, you got to know how to rile him up. Which, I, <laughs> and, and when you get him mad, yeah, you know, he's like everyone else. They get a little flustered, wow. you know, and they don't necessarily make mistakes. But when he takes a swing at me, and I just barely get out of the way, I mean, oh. how does that look on TV? <laughs> <laughs> And verbally, he goes uh, like I this, says, and, yeah. and, and, you know. But no, I've had, I, I had a very good uh, relationship when I was vice chair of uh, public works. With Bill O'Brien? Yeah. I had a very good, uh, we uh, had a, I, I disagreed with him several times, and so, and as long as, uh, you know, we didn't uh, get arguing in public, I guess that was all right. You know, uh, having... The ability, having the time, if you don't mind talking about Bill for just a, Bill O'Brien, just okay. for having talked to Bill O'Brien off camera and then on camera and then off camera, you do say things and, and talk a little differently because you're, you know, you, you kind of want to say stuff, but you don't really want to say it on, on the air. One of the things I, I found was uh, something that he said. I think that I can say what he said, and that was, you know, Kenny says, when I was speaker, there was like 160 new people coming into the House of Representatives. They were coming in with a, really a chip on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. They were coming in uh, for all sorts of reasons. They didn't know the rules. They didn't know the decorum, the manners. And it was really kind of the Wild West. And I said, why don't you come out and say that? I mean, he can't say that. He well, knows. no. He, you know, he keeps falling on his sword. And I'm going, Bill, you know, oh, why don't you just right. say he, that? I, I said more or less the same thing. But uh, he said he was going to take all the shots because he could take it. And uh, I don't think he realized how, uh, how, much, how long that remained, even after he was speaker. And they treated him like a demon. And he was a very reasonable person and very active and very focused. And that's what I liked about him. Oh, he was nasty, too. I mean, Bill <laughs> O'Brien could be nasty. I mean, don't, don't please, let's not use Wait that. Out, I'm gonna... in trouble. <laughs> I don't cut the film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my neck was sick. No, uh, well, so I, I saw Bill O'Brien differently. Uh -huh. uh, so we did argue. And by the way, he had the rule whereby, I love this one, uh, Let's say there's something extremely complicated. We'll use uh, uh, commerce banking. 
mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when he was speaker. And there were some points that you really had to, on bills, make. You had to educate the people out there. Yeah. Now, you're sitting out there and you know nothing about the bill, mm -hmm. but because you're a Republican, you're just going to vote Republican. And that's sort of like what everybody does. Even Democrats sort of do that. You can't learn all the bills. No, you but can't because... do it. It's impossible. So you must listen to the people who stand up and talk about it. Well, he said just nine minutes per bill. Nine minutes. Mm. So that means if two people get up and they do the nine minutes, I was the third person to get up and I, I couldn't speak. Mm. And I said, well, stop a second. Well, those are the House rules and it was voted on. I'm going, well, wait a minute. I, you mean I can't speak? Well, there's this? a method of if there's something that's so that the majority of people in the audience want to hear, they will vote to, uh, what do you call it? You, to, can't, to, you can't vote that Ken Gidge can speak. Yeah, well, no, that you continue debate. Well, you can do that. You can have an exception to the rule to continue debate if it's something that's so important for that understanding that bill. Well, when you have a supermajority, why even have any minutes? <laughs> <laughs> you know, think about it. Well, we got to because give you you're going to do time and get there. what you want anyway. You're going to earn your dollar up there a day. <laughs> and uh, that's how I got to know Bill O'Brien. He was nasty to me, so I went to his in his office, and he let me in. Big mistake. So we're in the office, and we get into this. He'll let anybody in. Oh yeah, we got into this really argument, right? I mean, we're not quite yelling and screaming, but we are. Why did you do this? I mean, I have a right to speak. Well, that's the rules. So this company opens the door, and like there are three people at the door ready to come in and break us up from fighting. Well, Bill says, close the door. And we ended up, we're laughing. So this happened twice. So the, the last time I went in there to see him, he said, let me eat my lunch first, will you? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got to know no, Bill. Yeah. But people then never saw him that way. Yeah. So when you say demonize, how can you stop someone from having the right to speak? How can you do that? Well, there has to be some kind of decorum in there. I, I agree that you can't prohibit somebody to make their point. You, you ought to be able to uh, extend the, the rule, but not in every case, because as you know, you'll get some people up there. There were several of the Democrats that talked 30 minutes or more. Uh, I timed one of them is no longer with us, who's a Republican, 53 minutes. Well, look, they did it too. But the interesting thing is, a lot of people got up and left. Mm -hmm. And that sort of tells you that, you know, you're talking, and so you may be talking to the camera and, and the people. But who, some who people only this. want to do that. <laughs> well, I, yes, but, no, but you must, you must uh, appreciate. Speaker Norelli giving everyone as much as they wanted. And uh, many times, people hung themselves. I mean, you give a person enough rope, you know, they, they, uh, you know the string, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll make rope out of it. Uh, but for, to come along and say, geez, you only got uh, nine minutes, or say three minutes per person is fine, or four minutes per person, not everybody will use it. He has, his, he has his hammer. He has a clock right there. Boom! End your sentence. And that's yeah. it. Well, we're not going to solve that, and we'll no. see how our new speaker handles it. But I think but we still have a few people who just love to hear themselves talk. Yes. Well, what, what do you think? What do you think we're doing this show for? <laughs> I mean, it, it, don't you love to hear yourself talk? Oh, not really, but I like to hear uh, other, the other people t talk and uh, see, see how this is one, one reason that I do have the show is to actually get people exposed to the audience so that they have a, an opportunity to show themselves in, not in the uh, legislature but in, in a very comfortable Atmosphere. Well, I'm certainly not going to act this way when they turn the cameras on. So, uh, <laughs> when, when, when is the show going to be good? No, but that's that's one of the things. That's one of the reasons I bring you on. It's that I got to give you as an example. You didn't have anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but uh, I don't. I can't get any other Democrat. Really? Yeah. And I could not get any uh, Democrats on my show at all under any circumstances. In fact, uh, several people who uh, lost had plenty of opportunity to come on, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't. And I said, take an opportunity because you have a show. And uh, at that time, Avod, I believe, had a show, mm -hmm. and, and, and Silver. And, and, I, and I said, look, you, you, you get the publicity. It's OK. Uh, Bill O'Brien will not eat you. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, we, have an, we had an agreement. Same thing with El Belvisaro, is you got 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Leave him alone. Mm -hmm. And then ask some questions, but let's not scare anybody away. Yeah. Oh, no, that's what I think this public access TV is for, really. Uh, I'm happy that uh, we have it here, finally, uh, you know, the last two By years. By the way, I was, we're pretty instrumental. We closed the meeting. It's, it's a long, long story. We did the first show, in studio show, was done with uh, the former mayor, Streeter, and myself, and, uh -huh. and Dick uh, uh -huh. Gagnon. Uh, we were kind of instrumental of getting it. We mm -hmm. almost didn't get the channel. And it was because of several people in the audience who got so rowdy oh, when really? they were ready to sign the contract with Comcast, and this was got six years ago. And, they, and there was no extra station. Huh. So a couple of people got up and yelled and screamed, and they turned off the cameras, and they turned off the TV. I'm serious. Turned off everything, and when we brought people in from... Manchester and Londonderry and Concord really? and said, what are you guys doing? And then someone turned to the person who is running the, uh, uh, the access TV, or I should say, uh, the, uh, the board, cable board, uh -huh. and said, well, uh, didn't anyone come to these meetings? I mean, if these yeah. people want a station. We're ready to sign a contract, and it's not there. He says, nobody came. I said, excuse me? I was at two of the three meetings, and so they stopped. Two days later, Comcast gave, them, gave us this station. The pe All right, so they were so mad, the people who didn't want the station, is they wouldn't find it for like three or four years. Uh. And then when the station came on, there were people... Uh, in the c city government that I wanted to come on and talk, they wouldn't come on because they were against it and they thought I'd beat them up. Uh. And I said, no, this is a good opportunity, as you said, is to show that here is something that you and I mm -hmm. can sit down and talk. Uh, some people want to grow, you know, show how you grow tomatoes or, or, yeah. or all sorts of things, but there's nothing like it. All over, it, it, there's nothing like it. Here's a, a great opportunity. How, how could you get certain people? You've had governors on. You've had, you've had everybody on here. This is a tiny little, little thing like yeah. that. But yet, because of it, because of the freedom that one has on this, there's no, no commercials here as mm -hmm. far as I know. Uh, these are really important things. So you've got to fight for them. And, and then there's you, shows like yours and shows like mine. And all of a sudden, after a while, they want to get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they don't. They're renegotiating the contract now. So one of the things that we wanted here is uh, some way to get feedback to see whether our shows are really drawing an audience or not. And uh, I'm told that it's, uh, it's possible electronically to do that, but that Comcast doesn't want to do that. Well, of course they don't want to do that. They don't want to show that there are shows that are so popular that, <laughs> that, that you know, that it takes away from their... their. Uh, well, maybe our audience should write letters into the mayor and uh, let them... Uh, well, the problem is people have already written letters <laughs> in about my show and you, you don't want them writing letters. God forbid someone sit down. Well... The audience, if they want to uh, see more of these kind of shows, they ought to do something and talk about that now. Uh, now is the time during contract negotiations to, to try to get what you want. I think that's. Uh, I think it's a. It's just a, a complete shame if 
there wasn't a good contract for this. It is run so tightly, as we mm -hmm. know, uh, Dick Agnan and, and the people who work for him. It's, it's so tight. They're so professional. Yeah. The cameras and all the equipment, which is here and is already purchased, is as good as Channel 9. The quality, the, the sound. Is They've it working? It's so good. It is. You can't, uh, you know, you can't uh, fault any of it. The operation, the people are very good in running these things. But uh, why can't we get the support? The, the people have to support this. Like they have to support anything else they like. If they don't like us, then maybe we'll find out and they'll turn us off. But uh, you know, if uh, if we can uh, look at it and see how many people are viewing, I think people will get in information. I know one of the big things that you did and I did is to inform people about political views <clears throat> before the election. That's correct. How, how else do they really know? You talk about the legislators not knowing the content of some of these complex bills. Uh, the voters are going out there not knowing who they're voting for either. And the sad part is, is that our local paper, The Telegraph, which is my paper of choice it's been for over 100 years and uh, my family you've been here that long oh yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> real old and i'm one of those those people who have taken up to so much medicaid you know get, get rid of me uh but uh they got rid of kevin lanigan yeah uh so here we are the second largest city and we have somebody one of the most probably one of the better writers in the state mm -hmm. and i don't know what they were paying him that could have been that much but we had a, a, you know, up at the State House, there's a little place there for Nashua. Oh, yeah. It's gone. You know, basically Kevin's gone. Yeah. So, uh, of course, the Telegraph loves me because I call them and said, oh, do you, are you going to publish a 1-800 number so we can call you when things are taking place up there? <laughs> yeah. So I just said it here. <coughs> and so people can watch this. But it's factual. We're not getting the news as we got before. Mm -hmm. No, you got to turn to Chevin, Channel 50 to Kevin. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't know why we don't get up there. I mean, you know. Well, uh, I've asked Kevin to appear on the show, and he's been a pretty busy person, he said. Yes, so, uh, yes. But he will appear on the show soon, sometime in the next few months. I did a show, this is this is many years ago. Uh, there used to be people from the media, mm -hmm. And then there were there were two shows on Sundays. People from the media and the uh, the political bigwigs. Okay. Well, the people from the media was Kevin, and I was on uh, radio, and there's Woody Woodland on radio, and someone from from Portsmouth. I mean, we really rocked the place. I mean, they, we just we we were better than the pundits. We well. really were. Uh, but I was with Kevin when they fired all of us. <laughs> well, we didn't get fired. They're just not going to do the show anymore. Yeah. So I was on there. So I'm not sure if Kevin wanted to come on my show. Cause last time I was uh, on TV with Kevin, we both lost our, our positions. <laughs> but no, Kevin is, uh, he will come on your show. Yeah, he's, he's, he's smart. He's somebody that uh, uh, this should be heard. And also these programs, access programs, that's the only place you can get it. Mm -hmm. There's no commercials. We do do make fools out of ourselves. Occasionally, we, we're even profound. <laughs> oh, really? You went that far? Well, <laughs> occasionally, I, you don't always make a, a, a fool out of yourself, do you? <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Let's get back to the yeah, politics up there. All right, OK. OK, so you're going to be doing uh, Department of Commerce, I mean, the uh, Commerce Committee. committee. Yep. Uh, what other things are they going to be handling? Is it banking and? Uh... It's banking, insurance, and consumer affairs. Right. And if we didn't have consumer affairs, we'd all go nuts. Oh, really? Oh, that's, yeah. That's... Consumer affairs is fun. I mean, you know, talk about you talk about beer and, you know, we had a bill once that, uh, the, this is the, the weirdest bill. Is that they, they dug bones up. Uh, from the Civil War, mm -hmm. and they brought him to New Hampshire, and they and they, you know, they buried him here illegally. Then they were, they wanted to pass a law that it would be illegal to dig the bones up to bring them back. <laughs> and ah. I, I, that was my first term, and I didn't quite get all of that. But I mean, it it, it can be interesting. It can be fun. Mm. Uh, 
talking about liquor or talking about everything. Uh, that's, well, you, you handle know, all that stuff on the, uh, on the Liquor Commission and everything. Uh, that's correct. Like that. That was kind of interesting at times. Maybe you give us a little review of that, uh, where we had commissioners uh, being called to uh, report on, on certain incidences. Uh, in fact, Bill O'Brien uh, <coughs> probably was the worst thing he ever did, was put me on that commission. Oh, really? Which uh, was two years ago, I think. And it ended a day after the election. This is true. It ended literally a day after the election. We, we, we said, okay, we're, we're all done. And several people weren't reelected, so they didn't show up. Uh, but so I've got quite a, a handle on uh, us here in the state and the Liquor Commission, losing $100,000 worth right. of, of And wine. then it was a mistake, or what was it? Yeah, I, you know, I, I talked to people. I know people who worked for, uh, you know, for at, at, at the liquor stores. He says... One person says, oh, it's not lost. Nobody stole it. It's it's in a warehouse someplace, or it's it's." They didn't keep a very good inventory control. Well, this is not yeah. This is not something new. This has happened all the time. But I think under the I, I don't know if under the the new people it's going to be any any different. But that was kind of you can't lose a hundred thousand dollars worth of liquor. You can't have employees complaining as you. I think you were alluding to, or, or uh, having the commissioners sort of being attacked for all sorts of reasons. Well, I know everything came up. I heard stories like, uh, well, what they were doing is uh, some wine was called expired or something like that, and people were just taking it home instead of throwing it out. Well, you know, I... little things like that. All sorts of things could yeah. happen, but the problem is you do have to have a control and you do have to have trustworthy people. Uh, I think this is where New Hampshire has been lucky. We have had some very <coughs> good people. We always have good people. It's really, and, and the ones who are not good, we certainly take care of them eventually. Eventually. Yeah. You don't get rid but, of them uh, real quick. As far as wine and stuff like that, because we have bills now that uh, they come through uh, commerce, uh, which... Uh, the new pe the new, we have a lot of wineries here, uh, or people who make wine uh, in New Hampshire, or develop it in New Hampshire. They mm -hmm. might have to get grapes because they can't sure. get as many grapes. Right. They, they might get need the, get the okay grape juice someplace. Else. Exactly. So there's some really good stuff out yeah, there. Oh yeah, definitely. So we wanted to, to make sure that the the growers uh, in the uh, in New Hampshire, and those who are making it and selling it, were going to have not only their fair share, but Come on now, this is you know made in New Hampshire. So well, they're doing one thing. I have to commend them for they're doing a better job marketing. Ah, they know yes. how to have their sales. They know how to uh, yes. give you deals there. I mean, uh, yes. uh, they, they, that was when I moved up here. You know, well, how long ago now? Fifteen years ago, but uh, they they weren't. They were just there. They serve you, and the price is the price. You know, and now. There's sales, there's deals. Uh, you buy, like just uh, last month, you buy $100 worth, you get, uh, no, it's $150 worth, and you get a $50 gift card. Can't do better than that. That's pretty good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I didn't see any Massachusetts uh, liquor stores giving deals like that. No. Uh, and the reason for that is when we did the study uh, on where did the wine go? Why was this lost? Why is this commissioner doing this? Or, or uh, Eddie Edwards was one of, one of the individuals who said the commissioner said this, and the commissioner said, I didn't say that. And so it, was a, it was kind of really... Yeah, it's a little infighting. <clears throat> yes, but what we found out was the reason why it is as it is is because of Maggie Hassan. Maggie Hassan passed a bill so the Liquor Commission could uh, run it like a business mm -hmm. because basically the House of Representatives and the state was running it. So we divided this up and got us out of the business and let them do what they do best. And when they did the study on the Liquor Commission, we found out since that had been put in, 
it was 20 extra million dollars a year. And also they brought in the person who does the marketing, which was an exceptional individual. Mm -hmm. you know? And have you, you've seen the new, the new places where oh, you yeah. go to Concord. I mean, yeah. you, you've seen the new gas stations at these. One hooks it, you mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and, and we need it. Mm -hmm. A little store, I guess a little restaurant there. It's such a hard time that they, they yeah, again, they really didn't approach it at first in a business-like way. Right. You know, you go out, we need a, some kind of person to say he wants to make a bid on, and he'll tell us what he wants to do. That's right. Uh, you know, you got to get, you got to be a little bit more flexible. Finally, they did twist an arm, get a good guy to do that and make a bid on it, and uh, he turned beautiful job. Beautiful yes, job. and you must thank the governor for that, because that was one of the big arguments that the Republicans wanted to make then, is when Maggie Hassan was running for governor, well, she did this and that happened, but it, they, they pretty much had stopped because we started seeing, yes, there was uh, an anomaly, $100,000. You can't, you can't justify losing $100,000. I don't care who you are. You know, I, I don't care. You can't do that. Well, the, so, but uh, somehow they figured out it was under a thousand dollars. I don't know how they figured that out too. That was that was just something they picked out of the air. But in general, I think they, I think they ought to look at it, all the operations up there, all the different groups, and what they do. I think we've done that with transportation now too. Uh, that uh, you say not just not just run it like a business as our liquor commission, but run other. Parts of the state that no, way? No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I meant uh, that the, the liquor commissioner is doing what they're doing in a more business-like way. Yes. Okay. I think we have to look at some of the, and maybe a pick on the HHS because it's the biggest uh, group up there. Uh, they have to do more of a business-like approach in working with the agencies that they, uh, the agencies, the uh, vendors that they have. It says, well, how many thousand vendors that they have? Quite a few. That's right. Uh, two, three, four thousand. I, 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 haven't, I haven't had anybody give me an accurate number. It's, but anyway, between two and four thousand, uh, usually they're nonprofit organizations. Yes. They yes. Have. Uh, but why don't we, like most companies, look to reduce the number of contractors you have by talking maybe to them and telling them to combine? into a, a little larger group, service more broader areas in the, in the state, and do things like that. And they might be able and have, have uh, the ability to have the agencies, uh, the vendors bid against one another so that you get a better price, a more efficient operation, and you get the uh, vendors evaluated every time the contract ends. Did they meet the objective of the contract? Did they do everything on time? Did they have any problems, this, that, or other things? You know, a number of categories. Yep, yep. And, and then operate a little bit more effectively. Well, that's taking a big brush and going like this. What this does is this eliminates the politicians. It yeah. keeps the politics out of it. And that's what happened with the Liquor Commission was they got the politics out of it. But because of that, uh, two years ago, they have laws in now that are, that are slowing down the ability of the commission to do what it can do. In other words, what you're seeing now are the contracts that we're already in. I think what you're going to see is it's going to stop making as much money it was making because we're going to get back involved with it. Really? Now, what you're saying is that uh, if it was run more like a business, uh, it would run better. And I, we agree, but the problem is, is that we keep getting our fingers in, in, involved with it. We have over $660 million of, of liquor that, that, that is sold, high, pretty high profits mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. and running it like a business, uh, you know, buy 150 get a $50 gift card, come on. I know, I've never heard of that before, but mm. what does this do? And then they built this uh, new place down on uh, uh, next to Home Depot in Ashworth, mm -hmm. Coliseum Ave, and everybody complained about that being so big and 
They did? I didn't oh, hear yeah. anything like that. I was happy it was big. They had better selection. <clears throat> better selection, com more comfortable, mm -hmm. the better area to come into, more relaxed. Sales went up. More people are coming. There's better parking in the sense. So that's what's needed. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it be nice? But there's 400 of us. How do you shut 400 up? You have to have a little <clears throat> bit of discipline in that, running that. You can't have us operating. But that's what, again, a lot of times those contracts are, are somebody's friend. Well, I think that's always going to happen. I, I, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, okay? But uh, if, we could, if we could just run things like a, like a business, leave people alone, but it's one thing that us politicians can't seem to do. And I'm saying us politicians. It's, it's not you and it's not me personally, but it's us as a, as a group. Can't let things go. Mm -hmm. we, we talk about, you know, it could run better if, or they could, you know, spend more money if we had more money, but we won't stop. We won't let things grow like the, the mm -hmm. liquor commission. They, we, you wouldn't let them run it. You know how ridiculous it was, some of the things we heard? Somebody broke a window and it cost $600. Well, they had to go to get the money to pay for that window through us, to have the ability, someone to sign the really? check. Well, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, it, it, I think it was $2,500, $3,000. You know, somebody breaks all the windows, that's $5,000. Yeah. So how can they fix it? And is someone's, uh, a vendor's going to come, they're going to want to fix the windows, and they want to get paid. Well, what is it for us, 90 days? You know, before we pay somebody? I mean, so it's... You have to do that in everything. And uh, well, how do we get rid of that? Well, there are we people <laughs> saying we've got about two hundred too many. <laughs> do you think we should reduce the number <clears throat> of people up there? Absolutely not. No. Why? Well, I, I I think everybody gets to the point. You know, every I I got to the point where I said yes, we should. Yeah. I got to the point where I said no, we should not. <laughs> I said yes, we should. Now I'm at no, we should not. So we where should. are you going to wind up? It's quite a diverse group. I think, mm -hmm. I think that uh, that people. You know what I've said to people? I said you know you you either know a state representative, know someone who was a state representative. You may be thinking of run, running for a state representative, and everybody knows a dead state representative. <laughs> in other words, there's so much politics in the, in the state of New Hampshire. I mean, it's, it's just so congested. Uh, but no, I would not change it because of all the people. Some of the people come in a, a really kind of wily on both sides. I mean, come on. Uh, you don't necessarily have to get in through... a uh, common sense. You can get in with common sense. You don't need a lot of money yeah, uh, that's true. To, to get involved. Uh, but you don't make any money. Uh, and I, I will bet you there are more bankruptcies, seriously, through, through people who run it. Uh, for really? Poly oh, yeah. And broken up marriages. Well, that I can understand with the time some people spend up yeah. there. Like we were supposed to have today uh, we were going to have uh, Senator Avad. Well, I saw him this morning, and he said he, you know, obviously yeah. called you. He said he couldn't make it. Yeah. He was crazy. He's they're crazy up there. Well, that's the senators too. I mean, you have 400 reps, and you have 24 senators working on the same bills. Uh, so it's obviously, you know, they have they have to be on three committees. Where we have no more than one, for the most part. Well. <clears throat> You know, I'll tell you, the senators will pass things off to us. Oh, yeah, they will, but they uh, still have a lot to, to beat yeah, that. Yeah. They have a lot to read. I know Kevin has told me he, he was surprised at how much paper he has to read. And I don't know why there's not a machine that you can put these through and have it read to you. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm well, serious. Well, that's what put I, that in. I drive from Nashua to Concord, and I listen to audio books. Mm -hmm. I also have set my uh, iPhone up so it can read bills to me. So as I'm going up, I can read bills really? or have bills mm -hmm. read to me. Uh, why doesn't that, uh, that that's from uh, Google. Uh, no one else does it. 
why can't we set it up where we can sort of put a bill in, have it spin mm -hmm. around, have it recorded, and have people have the ability to listen to them? Uh, I mean, I've done yeah, that. You can right do that. Thing. I mean, you can call up on the <clears throat> phone and get, uh, you know, so, some uh, information. You can listen to re uh, records on. Uh, Not on, on your bills. Phone. No, but all we have to do is set it up, just like it was uh, a musical tune, and somebody reads it to you. Yeah, we, a sweet we, a voice. <laughs> a musical <laughs> tune. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, I got news for you. That was the first bill I ever put in, by the way. What? To have the, somebody read? No, that was, yes, yeah, so it should be recorded. Oh, really? It, yes, and you would be able to, on the way up, uh, play it back on your, from your radio or your CD. You could just have a CD. Either you could pick it up at the State House or you could make it at your house. So that could all take place. But well, they that, could, you could just call in, like, you, like you review bills now. You can... What do you mean call in? Or like I call in and say read a bill of a hundred pages? Well, you just you know tap something into your phone and it uh, reads it out to you. Why not? What I, I agree with you, but who's going to read it? Well, somebody up there. We have somebody. Uh, a you public know access. We, TV. We, we got <laughs> yeah. I know. We we got four hundred reps. I can I can see four hundred reps, five thousand readers. <laughs> Well, we have over a thousand bills, but maybe you have something like anything over two pages has to be read to you. Well, uh, I think that that should take place. Uh, I did see. I was in uh, the senator's office. He had that much paper on his on his desk, and he said, oh, "This is just, you know, this morning since I've got here. You can't do it all. You can't, and you're not paid to yeah. do it. And and I think here in New Hampshire, I think I think." You got to start respecting your, your, your people, your political people. You know, we're talking about a person being vilified, right? That's okay, and that sounds pretty good. But guess what? You know, we don't get paid for this. Yeah. yeah. And we ought to be more civil. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we need stuff like bills read to us, so that not read to us, well, but well, I read like to period. see bills that are not so complex too. I don't know why we had they, a lot of them have to be so wordy. Oh, well, we had a, <clears throat> uh, two years ago, we had come in on our committee of the changing of all the corporate laws, 162 oh, yeah. pages, mm -hmm. and they wanted it all done in three days, and I held it in my hand, and I saw that the, the uh, senators voted for it, 100%, 100% they voted for it. So I, I grab it and I go, what? So I, I run over to the Secretary of State's office and he sends me over to, you know, uh, the corporate. And the corporate goes, well, you know, you just had an FRM thing where all sorts of people lost a lot yeah. of money. Well, if you look at this bill, they took something out that, that, that gives people the ability to get particular information. This also takes away the ability for somebody with no money have the ability to get the information without going to court. Mm. They took that away. So mm. I, I said, well, that's not right. You know, that's not what they're trying yeah. to do. And, and then there's something called a side-by-side, -side, and that is you take, this is 161 pages, and you have a, the other one is 150 pages, and basically you go like this. Okay, this is what this says, and this is the change. Well, come to find out, these people who wanted this to go through gave us a glossary instead of a side-by-side. -side. So I started going down the glossary, and I see, here's the glossary, and over here, they completely changed this without putting it in the glossary that they had changed it. So in other words, they were writing laws. And this is not the lawmakers. These were the, the corporate people. These were not lawmakers doing this. Mm. The lawmakers agreed upon that. So for two years, I held it up for two years. And finally, we got it mm -hmm. so people can come in, and if they have a problem with a corporation, and a corporation having a problem with somebody, instead of spending all the money, is that you or me? That's me. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. It's $5. <laughs> it's, that's probably anybody who does that is $5. But uh, believe me, that, uh, th that's happened. <clears throat> well, let's see who it is. Uh, Come on, let's just, 
I've done that I before. Get that I'll, out. I'll take a call too. <laughs> Well, there we go. Another commercial. I shut it off. Oh, well. Telling us you to can shut tell, up. You can tell that we don't have this <laughs> planned out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I was just last night, at the, the night before, at the Boston Pops. Yeah. And now, Boston Pops, this is really, yeah. you know. And somebody had that. Oh, no, it was me. Oh, it was you. I wanted to shut my <laughs> iPhone yeah. off. So I pressed it and turned Siri on. Oh, no. Hi, this is Siri. <laughs> May I help you? You know, you know, glory to the God. This is Siri. Can I help you? And so I had so many people. <laughs> well, that in funerals, you don't want your. No, no. Yeah. No, well. This is okay. This is acceptable. Well, we're coming to an end on this thing, you know. <laughs> How can we come to an end? We just started. It's it's the family hour, and uh, you know. What, what do you think uh, is the best thing you're, you're going to be able to do in this uh, legislative term? As you know, I, I, I do painting. Yeah. So what I've put a bill in is to study the arts. What is the revenue streams that the arts bring in? Mm -hmm. At this particular point, we found out it's close to $200 million that the arts bring in. Really? Yes. What do we pay to get the 200 million. Well, we pay basically 300,000 for, for a state, and they get uh, 600,000, and then there's the private organizations, and then, so I'm putting them all together. Mm -hmm. And I wanna find out what we have making for the arts. Mm. And if we find that we're making a lot of money in the arts, and the state can, let's say, put in 2% more to help, but you put in a nickel and you get a dollar back. So that's what I hope to do for the next two years is instead of arguing big things, let's try to get the culture, because we talked about that, the art culture. Uh, try to keep the people here more of an interesting place. So mm -hmm. that's for the next next, next year. Uh, this year I will be in a lot with that. So a lot of other things also, but that's, that's, that's where my heart is. How about yourself? Good. Well, I hope to uh, get a little bit more transparency in some of these uh, things that uh, are happening. And I'm asking people to uh, evaluate uh, vendors. I'm asking people to uh, uh, communicate a little bit better on, uh, on uh, what they are doing. For example, uh, we have an audit group up there. Each agency is audited periodically. Are they doing anything with that audit? Are we, paying, are we paying the audit, uh, how many millions of dollars to have an audit department that nobody's paying attention to? And that's simple as that, asking that question. Yeah. You could save millions of dollars. Yeah. And maybe give it to the arts. How well, about that? If, if, you can, <laughs> if you can give a nickel and get a dollar back. Yeah. All right. Well, Ken, we're going to have to do this again. And uh, I'm very happy. Uh, of course, this is a little bit different than my normal show. But we had fun. Well, yeah, I, I think we good. did. We, we haven't beaten each other up. <laughs> no, just... That's not the purpose. But uh, hopefully the audience gets to know a little bit better each one of us and uh, what they do. And maybe they can tell us what they would like to hear next time. Okay? I'd like to know. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening in. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.